I want to talk about measuring errors. So the question is, is an error of 25 pounds good or bad? And the answer is that it depends. So uh, an example here is the uh, average North American person weighs 178 pounds. So is an error of 25 pounds on that measurement good or bad? What about a uh, large airplane, a Boeing 787, it weighs about a half million pounds, so 25 pounds on half million, good or bad? Uh, it depends, right? So measurements of error, we have true error, which is the difference between a true value, we'll call XT, and the current estimate, XR. So for the example given above, the true error is 25 pounds for both the person and the airplane. The magnitude really does matter, so the true relative error is the difference between uh, the true and the current approximation divided by the actual true value. So we'll call that epsilon t, and it's the true error divided by the true value. So when we look at the example here, the person, the true error is 0.14, and the airplane is 0.00005. Usually these get expressed in terms of a percentage, so we'll just take the absolute value and multiply it by 100. So looking at the true relative error uh, for our example here, for the person it's 14.04%, which is rather large. Uh, but when we look at the airplane, 25 pounds of error on a half million, a half million pound airplane is 0.005%, which is probably insignificant for most calculations. So the problem though is in numerical methods most of the time you don't know what the answer is prior to starting your solution. Otherwise, why would you be solving the problem? So for these times we use an iterative approach and we compute approximate errors. So an approximate error is the difference between what we currently think is the answer minus the previous answer that we had, so it relies on knowledge of previous guesses. But magnitude is still important, so the error that we end up using most often is the approximate relative error, and this is expressed as a percentage, so it's the current approximation minus the old approximation divided by the current, and then we'll take the absolute value and multiply it by 100.